Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this I'm going to show you how you can cure primitive obsession in .NET by using value objects. Now, this whole concept is very much a DDD specific topic, but in my opinion, whenever you're dealing with any sort of domain, uh, it does actually make sense to uh, tackle it in this specific way, because it will actually, in my opinion, solve a lot of problems. Now, what is primitive obsession? Well, primitive obsession is the idea of using primitives to represent domain ideas. An example would be that you would use a string to represent the postcode, or in our case, you would use a double to represent temperature like Celsius. Um, by using those values and those types, you're assuming all the values that this specific type can take um, are valid values for the thing you're representing. For example, uh, I live in the UK. The UK uh, postcodes have a very specific format uh, for validity. So not every string is a valid postcode. So in that scenario, I would fix that by using a value object called UK postcode. And then I would allow this object to only take values that adhere to the rules of the UK postcode system. And why would I do that? Well, imagine that you have uh, an application that uh, customers sign up and they provide their uh, UK uh, postcode in, in your registration form. You would have to validate that this postcode is valid upon creation, but you might also have to validate it somewhere else in your application, or maybe when you want to send them like a post in the mail and, and, and that sort of thing. So you end up duplicating a lot of validation logic for what truly is uh, a postcode, a UK postcode. So what we're trying to fix here is to centralize uh, that logic in the domain object itself, the value object itself. And that's not the only thing. We also want to bake immutability because value objects are by nature immutable. Um, so the value cannot change. And there's a lot of things around it that really clear a lot of ambiguity in your code. Now, I totally understand that might not be something that everybody can use or everybody should use for that matter uh, but I think you can actually benefit if you're working in such an environment especially from what we talked about in the clean architecture uh, video which actually had value objects now enough with that let's just dive straight into the code and actually see what the value object is what primitive obsession is and how we can fix it very easily so I'm gonna go to this API and I'm gonna just run it before I show you the code to see what we have here. So first and foremost, I have a single forecast endpoint. And when I click send, I do get um, all those weathers. And that's the example that you see whenever you create a web API in .NET. So very straightforward, nothing special about it. Now let's just dive into the code a little bit and see how this is structured, right? So we have uh, the controller, which is calling the iWeather forecast service, and then it's getting the forecast and then it's mapping it to a response. So we have the domain layer and the um, contract layer, and we're doing a mapping on that. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I have it in this single project, but in reality, the domain folder would be a domain project and the uh, responses, which is the contracts, might actually be better suited to be in a dot .contract project as well. Um, and this is how I'm representing my weather forecast. I have a date, I have a temperature in Celsius, and then I have a summary. And those are init only properties because they're immutable uh, for that specific thing they're representing, the date, uh, sorry, the weather in that specific date and time. The problem with this specific use case is here. I'm using a double to represent the Celsius. Now, a double can have a wide variety of numbers from minus a lot to plus a lot. Um, and it's exceeding what a temperature in the Celsius can be. Temperature is a concept that actually has a maximum and a minimum. The maximum is not quite clear yet, but it's a very big number. Um, the minimum is zero Kelvin or absolute zero. And with a conversion in Celsius, this is minus 250 something uh, degrees Celsius. So the value cannot physically be less than that number. By using a double, we're assuming that it can. And sure, you can have validation, like I said before, uh, in different stages of your application, but then you're giving that responsibility to something else to do the validation of your domain object for you, um, which can be problematic. What if we could represent this value in a more domain-driven way? And we actually can. We can use something called a value object. Now, a value object can be represented with multiple ways. Uh, Microsoft gives you a class, I think, in the documentation to do that. I've been experimenting with records 
to actually create uh, value objects because one of the things with value objects is that um, equality when you're comparing them is based on their properties not on their reference so you have to override things like uh, equality uh, operators uh, get hash code all those things like to string as well sometimes um, so there's a lot of things you have to do to build a value object for this video, which I treat as a very much introductory video on the topic, I will actually recommend a library called ValueOf. ValueOf is made by the same creator who created um, OneOf, which we've actually made a video in this uh, channel, and you can click on the top right corner of your screen right now to watch that. And ValueOf actually gives you a very straightforward way of creating a, a value object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Manage NuGet Packages, and I'm going to say ValueOf. And I'm going to find this package and I'm going to uh, install it. And that's it. And what I want to do is I want to go into the main folder and I want to create a new directory uh, called value objects. And in there, I'm going to put my uh, value objects that I will use in various places of the application because that can be a postcode, it can be a temperature, like I said, it can be uh, the number of items in your basket, which cannot be negative, uh, a whole uh, list of things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class and I'm going to call it um, Celsius. And the way I will build that value object goes as follows. I'm going to extend the value of uh, class. And then the first thing in that generic type parameter, there's two generic type parameters. The first thing is the underlying uh, primitive that will be used to represent this um, value object. In our scenario is the double. And then the second thing is actually a reference of the type itself. So it's Celsius. Uh, and if I go ahead and fix the import on this value of it's this bit, um, I have my value object. The value object or the value of class actually comes with a lot of things that we need already uh, done for us. For example, validation baked into it. Um, it has the overridden uh, equality checks and operators so if you have two different value uh, of objects with the same value behind the scenes and you do an equality check it will actually return true because it checks the value it doesn't check the reference uh, but that's diving a bit too deep uh, and that's all i need to represent my uh, temperature and i'm going to copy that and i'm going to go back to my domain object and i'm going to change from a double to celsius and now I just cured my primitive obsession for this specific type. If I go to the services, you will see that now the code doesn't compile. So how can I convert this double to uh, a Celsius value object? So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to say Celsius dot from and the double in there. And now this Celsius value object and immutable value object uh, is representing temperature correctly. Well, almost correctly, because like I said, we can also validate in a value object the values that this thing can have. So how can we do this in value of? Well, you can just say override the uh, validate method and you can put any validation in there. So I'm going to say private uh, const and I'm going to say uh, absolute zero in cell CS. And you get to actually put that detail in this class, in this value object, because it's actually the owner of that property. It should know what the absolute zero in Celsius is. And I'm going to go real quick and Google it because I've no idea what it is by heart. Oh, and that should be a double, like we said. And then that is uh, minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And then what I want to do in that validate method is I want to say if value and this value is how value of is actually storing the primitive behind the scenes uh, is less than absolute zero in celsius throw new argument um, exception in fact you don't want to throw an argument exception it might be a better idea to create your own exception called temperature below absolute zero exception uh, and that should be a class and that should extend exception and then in there you override the constructor uh, base 
and then we just provide the value that the user provided for that thing so degrees and then you say something like message is tem temperature cannot be below absolute zero current value and then you just provide the value for debugging purposes and that's it and then i can actually return this and i get i can give it the value um, and that's it so now my value object knows how to validate itself so i don't need to split that logic in a thousand different places i mean I've, i am exaggerating here but it can actually get confusing i've seen places where you validate in different locations um, and for different things and if there is a misalignment with that validation, it can actually cause inconsistent behavior for your application. So now that we have that, what I want to do is, well, first I want to debug the application again to show you that nothing changed on a functional level. The application is still acting the exact same way. So if I go here and I click it again, as you can see, we're getting the exact same thing over and over again. Uh, by the way, many of you might be wondering, uh, won't there be a performance hit uh, by using an object instead of uh, a primitive? And some of the things uh, records is actually addressing there, but on a very theoretical level, yes. And actually there is a practical uh, decrease in performance because obviously you're newing up a new object, but the benefit from what you're doing um, highly outweighs any performance uh, concern you might have with this. It's so negligible that like, if you're worrying for newing up objects in your application, like I'm sure you have bigger problems than this basically so as we can see everything works fine what I want to show you is what would happen if that value was below absolute zero and how that would play out so I'm gonna go back to this service which randomizes the values and I'm gonna say minus 500 here and then maximum 55 so we're gonna give it a chance to fail and I'm gonna debug this again and show you what happens so back here I'm gonna click send now and as you can see, there was a bad request because the domain object threw an exception and I'm getting a, a 400 response back saying temperature cannot be below absolute zero current value. And that's the value that uh, the double randomized and gave to the Celsius object. And you'll see it showing over and over again. In this scenario, we didn't have any um, going below that. But if I keep clicking, it eventually will go below that because uh, it's just uh, chances. So as you can see, just in a single place, and that can be the same for returning something or creating something or in so many levels. Um, and it's very clear what it is, right? You don't need to search in validators or whatever. You just look at the object itself. I think that is a great way to get introduced to the concept. There's multiple ways you can do it. Like I said, um, the value object that Microsoft provides, um, records, a bunch of other stuff. I want to very quickly show you what I was talking about before with the equality checks because that's a bit important. Uh, what I have here is a simple console application. I will stop running uh, this project and I'm going to go to the console app and I'm going to delete this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the new get packages and add a value of in that console application. And in that very same project, I'm going to create the uh, in fact, I could just refer to the project, but let's just copy that Celsius thing. I'm going to paste that Celsius uh, value object here. So what I want to do is create two temperatures, right? Temp1. I want to say Celsius.from, and I want to give it a value 50, and then temp2, uh, and I want to give it a value 100, and then I want to give it a value uh, var temp3 equals Celsius from 50 again. Three completely different objects, right? One, two, three. But what I'm going to do is like console.writeLine and then uh, I want to say, actually, I'm not going to say, I'm just going to do the comparison because uh, I want to keep it simple. So temp1 equals uh, temp2, and this should return true or false. And then temp1 equals temp3. So I'm going to compare the completely different objects uh, temp1 and temp2 and then temp1 and temp3 the value between 1 and 3 is the same but the object reference is technically different so if I am to change that and I just run it let's see what we get back so as you can see first one says false second one says true 
but normally this comparison even though the value is uh, the same would return false because the reference is different however value object and value of actually behind the scenes will compare the value itself and that's one of the concepts behind the value object that it's not the object it's the value behind it so if you were to implement your own you should be using that approach as well again not something that you can apply everywhere but if you can apply it and if you're dealing with DDD and domain um, uh, related classes I highly recommend you take a look at it and trying to fix this or address it that's all I had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and I'll see you in the next video keep coding